it's something with the hard hat and uh, I go work in different states and you know I, people look at me well they think it's like yesterday you know the time frame for some people some people think it was 10 years ago some people think it was last year that it happened but uh, it was a unique experience uh, with the construction hat and someone singing Sinatra so uh, you know I'm the construction singer uh, especially when I'm in the realm of the unions and, and work guys. Sure. Then one guy tells somebody, and then, you know, the tough guys, they'll be like, you know, last night I Googled you, and yeah, you're pretty good. I say, oh, thank you. <laughs> I was adopted at birth, raised very Italian, two great parents. Uh, I thought I was Italian until I was 18, and I found out I was more Irish. Uh, at 33, 34, I met my birth biological family. I wound up with uh, 11 brothers and sisters, and uh, my uncles and cousins were all iron workers, Local 40. Now, I was doing uh, video, and, you know, I was kind of artsy with the cameras and video, and then I would renovate houses. So uh, I had a construction background, but they looked at me as soon as they met me, oh, you you got to become an iron worker. I said, what do you, yeah, the test is coming up, go take a test. So I wanted to take a test, and... Within a couple of months, I was standing on top of the 59th Street Bridge going, what the hell am I doing here? Because I never dreamt of that. But it took me on a whole path of, uh, I build big things now. I built little things. Now I, I work on most of the bridges. I've been in most of the bridges here in New York City and uh, around the country now. So uh, it's a great, I'm a local 40 structural iron worker. The real story is I was very, very depressed uh, the six months before that. I was going through a divorce. Uh, giving away, you know, uh, half of my worldly possessions and more. Uh, I was up in Massachusetts coming back to an empty hotel room working for my company. Uh, they asked me to do a job up there. It was a cold winter. And uh, I looked at everybody uh, who was on the road and they would go to these gin joints with bad food and, uh, you know, drink until they fell asleep and start the whole process again. So from that, from that experience, I said, I have to go back to what I what I would love to do, and entertaining was always, I thought about as when I was a child what I loved to do, and it was entertaining. It was getting into different outfits and singing, but um, I was a karaoke kind of guy, you know, at weddings go, and people said, oh, you sound good, and never formally trained, but I said, you know what, I want to sing. So in that hotel room, I said, instead of going to the gin joint and, and saying, I, I, I downloaded music and I started to learn lyrics. With, Maybe I overanalyzed. I said, well, when I get back to the city, maybe I should just go try to get an eight. You know, I overthought it. And then I just said, one day when I was at the city, I, I'm a smiler. So people are passing us on, on the street, and I'm smiling, saying hello, and they're, they're giving us dirty looks because we're blowing up their neighborhood. It's dirt, and it's grimy. and So, um, so yeah, I was there for a little while, and uh, I said... To my foreman, uh, my supervisor, I was the foreman for one of the crews. I said, would you mind if I sang at lunchtime? He said, sing, what are you talking about? I said, I have this little machine I bought and I learned some songs. You know, maybe I make the people smile and it's my lunch hour, so, you know, it's really half an hour. I said, would you mind? He said, I don't think there's any problem with it. So uh, that was it. It was, it was trying to connect with the neighborhood. You know, I have done all this work and I had these songs now, so... But it was never, it was only to make people kind of smile and not want to throw things at us. I always, I, um, my brother was 15 years older than me. My brother Anthony, that, my, from the family that raised me, the only real brother I knew at that time. And uh, I wasn't allowed to touch his records. He was a big doo-wop guy. Uh, but my parents really didn't care about their records. And their records consisted of... Uh, all the Italian American crooners uh, and Della Reese and stuff like that. So I, I really think I was in that era somehow. But uh, you know, I listened to that music, and uh, you know, I fell in love with it. I was the poster child for a, a blue collar American uh, union say guy, absolutely down the line. I had to do something. I was on a bad path, and if it wasn't, I mean, to be honest, if I if it wasn't for my children's faces at times. I was, in a, I was in a deep depression. And um, from the whole experience, I just learned, uh, you know, I didn't need a lot. I simplified my life. You know, I had a lot of properties, and I realized that everything owned me. And uh, from that process, but it's a hard process. You've got 
you got to go through some crap sometimes. So I say I'll be a construction guy. You got to get hit in the head with a two by four, and I got hit in the head with a two by four. I I, I had to make a change, and um, it started with taking care of myself, eating better, uh, you know, doing what I knew was good for myself. Because if I if I wasn't going to do good things for myself, why would the universe do anything for me? So well, that was the start of it, really. And then everything that just happened was uh, the universe. Am I, I may talk in metaphysics here, and a, but the universe opened, literally opened up for me. I, I can't tell you. And people just wanted to help me, you know. And uh, I get to sing. Uh, you know, I, I had a journal I was writing. And when you're depressed, if you're writing, when you go back and read it, you're like, oof, oof. But uh, things I mentioned today have all come true. So uh, it's, you know. You know, sometimes you got to go. I like to. I, I give lectures with songs, and I try to motivate people to do what they love to do, because uh, you know, as an average Joe, uh, I kind of feel like Rocky. Uh, you know, I mean, singing at the New York City Marathon 30 days later, being asked to do that was just an amazing process, from just someone who was in their hotel room. So, yeah, I would say poster child, blue collar guy. I had a vision of me on stage, and I was, I was healthier and slimmer. And that vision came into my head, and I was like, what? what are and, you know, you say Sinatra, I love Bobby Darren. If I wanted to sound like anybody, it was Bobby Darren. It wasn't to sound like Sinatra. I liked his music. I liked a lot of Johnny Mercer stuff, and, you know, uh, but I, I, you know, that was never, they gave me that name, and I was humbled by it. But, you know, I didn't go out to say, here I am, you know, I'm a Sinatra. I always loved hats, you know, that was like my thing, so. So it's cool. The wonderful thing about it, the people who knew me younger, you forget how you are. They, they were like, we always knew you, you know, you'd find that, the, the stage. You, you, we always knew, Gary, you were, you know, I, because that's what I, I really went back to what I, what I love to do. But I'm, I, I, what motivates me is how, like David Fisher, we, we met, they, who, who uh, just came by and put me on, not knowing what would go on. Uh, the experience of the meeting of the people. I have I had older, older people who had um, assisted, uh, people who assist them coming down in wheelchairs every day to listen. I got to know them. Uh, you know, I, I, Becky, who had passed away a couple of years ago, you know, we, we became instant friends and her family. So, uh, you know, uh, it's, the connections have been just magical. My father, uh, I, he, he was a plumber. He was a sewer cleaner. He had a rotor rooter business, uh, and uh, he always told me, "You got to do what you love." And I always thought, watching him work and everything, no, you could do something else and make money and then do what you love to do. And that's how I lived my life for a long time. But you could do what you love and and make money. You, you can. Um, the obligations of family and children and health care and everything like that. Uh, there's a myth in America, I think, that you can't do two things. You can. Stop watching TV. Stop going out a lot. You could do two things. You could work your job and do your thing, and then you could follow your passion, too. So um, I've learned that also. Music is magical. You know, you go, you know, all the people, you know, the music we do, young people relate to it, too. But uh, it brings back memory. It's very powerful. And uh, I could see why people who do it on grand scale, you get, you get more energy from that you're expelling. You know, you exchange, it's an exchange of energy. When you find what you love to do, that is just magical. And I am so happy to, in my 50s to have found that. It's much, it, it's, it's much, uh, it's, it's a better experience to find something that you love to do later on. And, uh, you know, I, yeah, I love, I, if I could do it, say, full, full time and and um, I, I do a lot, I do a lot of work, uh, that would be wonderful.